Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see so many of you here this morning. And we welcome all of you who have come to worship with us this morning. And the service has been led by the elders. Monday, the 5th of February, the elders meet at 4 p.m. and brigade meets at 6 p.m. Wednesday, coffee and chat on Zoom from 10.30 to 11.30. <clears throat> and Thursday, tea, toast and talk in a warm space here from, 12, from 10 until 12. Next Sunday, the 11th of February, 10.45 worship will be led by Mr. Alan Dufresne. And birthdays this week by Sophie Watson. So we wish her a very happy birthday. And a few other bits and pieces. If you could make donations of Easter eggs to the food bank from now until near Easter, as we'd like to give every child an Easter egg. And from tomorrow, the Prince's Trust will be here. There's been a slight change of plan because they felt that they couldn't do this room and the kitchen at the same time. So they're going to do this room and the corridor and reception, which needs a freshen up. So next Sunday the 11th and on Sunday the 18th, we won't be worshipping in here. We'll be worshipping back in the sanctuary and coffee will be in reception at the other end of the corridor. You know the Prince's Trust always finished with a presentation. So that is on the 21st of February at 2 p.m. and nearer the time we'll be asking for donations of cake so we can set cake and tea and coffee after the presentation. So we'd appreciate it if we could have a little help to clear this room and reception after we've had coffee. There is a newsletter from the Northampton Area Churches Partnership. There's going to be one once a quarter, as far as I understand it, and the first one you can pick up, it's on the table in the corridor. Thank you. <clears throat> praise the Lord. It is good to sing praise to our God. It is pleasant and right to praise him. Sing hymns of praise to the Lord. Play music on the harp to our God. And we're now going to do just that. We're going to sing Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
holy and blessed is God, we bring our thanks and praise today. We remember all that you have done for us and bring you our gratitude. We praise you for our freedom to worship, remembering that it was once denied us, as it is for so many around the world. We thank you for the ability to challenge and question the way things are, remembering here our forebears suffered for that right, as many still suffer today. We marvel at our freedom to love and live, and remember those hard-won battles, knowing that many battles are still to come. Lord Jesus, you brought healing and light, but we prefer darkness and despair by standing on the edge of society. You showed us how to see, yet we prefer to close our eyes to suffering. On your redeeming ring, we find delight and freedom. We prefer the bondage of sin. Heal and forgive us, Lord, and give us time to change. Most Holy Spirit, life-giving spirit of truth and love, <clears throat> speed on your flight and bathe us in your loving kindness, that we accept the forgiveness you offer, find the courage to forgive others, and the grace to forgive ourselves. Amen. Open our hearts and minds to <coughs> God that as we hear your word read and proclaimed, we may remember your great deeds and be inspired to serve you in our life together as church and in our own individual lives. Amen. Amen. Now we say the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. We will sing our next hymn, Lord, for the years. And after this hymn, we will have the offering. Yeah. 
Isaiah 40, verses 21 to 31. Do you not know? Were you not told long ago? Have you not heard how the world began? It was made by the one who sits on his throne, above the earth and beyond the sky. The people below look as tiny as ants. He stretched out the sky like a curtain like a tent in which to live. He brings down the powerful rulers and reduces them to nothing. They are like young plants, just set out and barely rooted. When the Lord sends a wind, they dry up and blow away like straw. To whom can the Holy God be compared? Is there anyone else like him? Look up at the sky. Who created the stars, you see? The one who leads them out like an army. 
he knows how many there are and calls each one by name. His power is so great, not one of them is ever missing. Israel, why then do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles or care if you suffer injustice? Don't you know, haven't you heard, the Lord is the everlasting God. He created all the world. He never grows tired or weary. No one understands his thoughts. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. Even those who are young grow weak. Young people fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is 502, O Let the Son of God Enfold You. So God is at work in human affairs too. 
the people of this time had become overwhelmed by the crisis of their age. Crisis that made them forget God's grace and reliability. They had forgotten the loving kindness of God. The faint and powerless will receive help from God's own hand, says Isaiah, if they just depend on God and his saving works. Sometimes we might wonder where God is and what he's doing, particularly when things are not going well for us. We need reminding at times, just as the Israelites did, that God is there for us, watching over us. He knows our strengths and weaknesses. All the evil things that are going on in the world today may shake our faith. So many conflicts, Israel and Gaza, Russia and Ukraine, problems in America and in our own country too. Local problems like rising prices, homelessness, stabbings among our young people. May we put our trust and hope in God, but in all things he will help to restore faith and hope in him. Amen. Affirmation of faith. We believe in the eternal one who has, since before time itself, guided and grieved us in our pain, sought and saved us when we were lost, Rejoiced and redeemed us from the miry pit. We believe in the risen Lord Jesus who became one with us, that we might learn to love and serve God and God's people. Jesus, betrayed by one he loved, given over to unjust trial and grievous execution, and all that was lost. But God raised him on the high. Relieving, revealing love in weakness and glory in gloom. We believe in the Holy Spirit, fire of God's love, dynamo of the church, light for our path. The one who prays within us when we don't have the words, bringing the grace through sign and symbol. We believe in the church, agency of God in our world, herald of the gospel, community of the free, imperfect sign, perfect love, the place of healing and wholeness of love and community. Our next hymn is Thou Whose Almighty Word.
chapter 1, verses 29 to 39, Jesus gives many people. Jesus and his disciples, including James and John, left the synagogue and went straight to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever. And as soon as Jesus arrived, he was told about her. He went to her, he took her by the hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. After the sun had set and the evening had come, people brought to Jesus all the sick and those who had demons. All the people of the town gathered in front of the house. Jesus healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases and drove out many demons. He would not let the demons say anything because they knew who he was. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of the town to a lonely place where he prayed. But Simon and his companions went out searching for him. And when they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. But Jesus answered, We must go on to the other villages round here. I have to preach in them also, because that is why I came. So he travelled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. start with John baptising and preaching to the people. Turn away from your sins and be baptised and God will forgive your sins. Many people came and were baptised. John was a very humble person who didn't want to detract attention away from Jesus, confessing that he was not good enough to even untie his sandals. John said to the people, I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Not long after this, Jesus came to John, and John baptised him in the river Jordan. After that, Jesus went into the desert for 40 days. When John was put in prison, Jesus again returned to Galilee, where he began to preach the good news. To help to do this, he recruited some fishermen, Simon Peter, Andrew, James and John. He persuaded them to leave their fishing boats and nets and go with him. I wonder how Peter's wife and mother-in-law felt about this. After all, Peter had a job at home and possibly children to support. And he left all this and went with Jesus, who he probably hadn't known that long. Jesus, with the new disciples, went to the synagogue where he began teaching. The people were very impressed with him. He taught with great knowledge and authority, and news of him quickly spread around Galilee. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they went to Peter's house, where his mother-in-law was in. Jesus was told about her, and he immediately went to see her. He took her by the hand and she was healed. Now she was able to wait on him. The thing that leapt out of this page when I read this was that as soon as Peter's mother-in-law was healed, she could go and cook a meal for them, which I thought seemed a little bit, you know, surely she should have been waited on, but never mind. She was obviously pleased to be healed. I would have thought she might have been a bit cross with Peter, 
first of all, it goes off with a drug manager. Jesus, then he comes home with a lot more people who need feeding. But no, she just gets on with the job because maybe she knew what a special person Jesus was because he had just healed her after all. Sometimes we need the Lord to come close and take us by the hand and renew our strength. The good news of our faith is spoken about in Isaiah and in Mark. The Holy Spirit has the power to lift us up on wings like eagles. Jesus came to save us, to set us free. Jesus worked hard all that evening, healing people and driving out demons. He was exhausted. So early the next morning, he left the house to go and find somewhere quiet to pray. The disciples went looking for him, not understanding that he needed to rest and time to regain his strength. It was very convenient for the disciples to just walk into the next room or down the road to get Jesus. We need to call him and find him in prayer. Many people came to find Jesus seeking help and healing. Lots of them were brought by their friends. Friends played an important part in the healing process. If it hadn't been for them, many would not have seen Jesus because they needed to carry him. We don't always think of ourselves as playing an important part in other people's lives, but we can, and very often we do, by being ready to listen to one another and offer comfort and hope. By the same token, we don't always ask for help or support when we need it for ourselves, but we should and we must. We should remember that healing comes from the power of the Lord, not from our own strength alone. The love of Jesus Christ is real and it does heal. When we take the time to rest in God's presence, to cry out for help, and to take Jesus by the hand and come to his table of grace, we will be healed. Session. Lord, sometimes we forget your goodness to us and turn away from the marvels that you have done. You called us, consecrated us yeah. for your service, poured love and grace upon us, moved mountains for us and keep us as the apple of your eye. We thank you for your loving kindness seen throughout our lives, especially in difficult times when your love has held us, even without us knowing. Bless with love all those that find life unbearable today. Those living in fear of war and dictators. Those crowded in unsafe refugee camps. Those working for peace, yet being shouted down by warmongers. Those waiting for life to end. And fill us with the memory of your command to work and to work. Risen Lord Jesus, we praise you for your life of loving service, defying proclamation and truth and power. Remind us of our call to resist the powers of evil that stalk our world. Our responsibility to tell the truth at every cost. 
and the price of love involved in carrying our crosses. Bless with your love all those who are called to tell the truth this day. Whistleblowers calling out corruption in high office. Peacemakers exposing a lust for war. Journalists revealing threats to democracy. Most Holy Spirit, we praise you for the energy you give the church, ever surprising us and calling us to new forms of life and vitality. Even sometimes when we least expect it, make us always eager to proclaim the gospel through word and deed. Bless with your love those who proclaim your saving work this week. Those who do donate to and volunteer at food banks. Those who <coughs> seek to make women's refuges safe and healing places. Those who welcome folk into groups for addiction where step by step freedom is found. And lastly, Lord, we bring our prayers to you for all those we love and worry about. People in our prayer book and people who are close to us. And we pray for Alan on the loss of his mother, for Rod and Glenys, for Mary and Roger, for Kate and Gordon, and for Reverend Liz.
voluntary the palm of his hands help you to remember all that God has done for you. May the one who lived and died and rose again for you help you proclaim the glorious gospel of freedom. May the one who came upon you at baptism fill you with the fire of God's love continue to inspire you to serve. And the blessing of God Almighty, source, guide and golden light be with you and all whom you love now and always. Amen. Thank you. 